1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. We'll read a few scriptures today. We'll dive into this word entitled, Rejoice, Pray, and Give Thanks. Rejoice, Pray, and Give Thanks. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's talk to the Father first. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day in your presence so far. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for the faithful people that are in the tabernacle today. Lord, move in a mighty way on all of us today. Give me the words to say that are from heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 17. Pray without ceasing. We should pray about everything. Pray without ceasing. This was brought up at the camp meeting, and I did not know this was not scheduled, but this was a verse that was dealt with over at the Windsor, North Carolina camp meeting, praying without ceasing. And, and somehow, three weeks or two weeks later, God leads me to this passage. Meaning that throughout our complete day, we need to be praying. Amen. Amen. We need all to be talking to God when we wake up, when we go to walking, when we go to sitting in our chairs, when we go to riding in our vehicles or driving our vehicles. We need to be praying. We need to have a constant communication with God. Mm -hmm. The only way that we can get our breakthrough from the personal things or our physical health or the personal things that are bothering us is we have to talk to God more. Mm -hmm. Amen? We must talk to God more. Uh, I know in life we, 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 we go to the point that we that we think that when we talk to God, it's a designated time. But as we grow in God, it moves from a designated time to you're doing it regular throughout each day, every day, every night. You're just talking to God. Praying without ceasing. That's what 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 is saying to us. When we pray without ceasing, God will move in our situation. Let's back up now to verse 16. It says, rejoice evermore. Amen. I must rejoice. I must rejoice no matter what is going on in my life. It's hard to rejoice when someone upsets our cart. It's hard to rejoice when someone bothers us. But the Lord wants us to rejoice. How do we rejoice today? How are we able to rejoice? We put a smile on our face when we do not feel like smiling. We laugh when we don't feel like laughing. Amen. And we rejoice in who? In God. There is a lot of situations in the past seven days I couldn't find a whole lot of rejoicing in. But I can rejoice in God. If we will lift our voices to God and rejoice in God, God will move on our behalf. But how many times are you rejoicing per day? How many times are you rejoicing in trouble? How many times am I rejoicing when, woo, it's trouble, trouble. 
Because most of the time, human nature, we want to go talk to our best friend about it. When we need to go talk to Jesus Christ Amen. about it. Amen. We go and we want to talk to our significant other or our best friend or whatever. Or our best family member about it. When we really need to talk and rejoice with God about it first. Because when we talk to human beings about our problems. They can only give us their viewpoint. And many times we've heard it before from them. We need to talk and rejoice in God and hear something new from the Lord. And God will reveal things to us through rejoicing and praying in the Word of God. Going and getting your Bible, opening it up or listening to the Word of God. And He will reveal things to us to make us come out of that misery that we're in. No one wants to live in misery. No one wants to feel sad. No one wants that. So when we get down with people that we're in contact with every day, just think about it for a minute. You know who your regular contacts are Monday through Saturday. Are those people bringing you joy in God or are they bringing you depression or are they bringing you misery those contacts Monday through Saturday determine your future relationship with God not only your present uh, relationship with God but they determine your future relationship with God because if these people I know we love people all our Lord but if they're always negative they're always complaining they're somehow I can't get through that I've got to go to God first yes, Lord. but many times we look to a person because we believe we can get a quicker response. We're going to get a quicker response. We're in the instant. I mean, get real with me this morning. Now, let's get real. We're in to getting an instant answer. I, I love going around and asking people different things. I already know the answer, but I want to be educated on what they gathered from it. We're Because we want it fast. But it takes time getting into God's Word and depending on God for everything. Do you depend on God when you walk to the bathroom? When you stand up, are you rejoicing in God that you can even stand up? Well, preach, I've been doing it for all these years. I just get up and go. But if we would slow down and start rejoicing in those small things of getting up, just even going to the bathroom, getting up and just going to the refrigerator. If we would rejoice in God, thank God when I open the refrigerator, there's something cold in it. You don't want to go open the refrigerator and it's hot. You're going to start complaining. But thank God I'm going there. There's something cold in it. And I rejoice in you, God, forevermore. I rejoice if I stop my big toe. I rejoice. I cut my hand last night. And it hurt pushing that new hand truck the ministry received this week. I, I cut my hand. And, and it kind of bothered me there for a few minutes. But I needed to rejoice when I cut my hand. Amen. And everything that's going on with us, we must rejoice. We're, we depend on other people to make us happy. Other people can't make you happy. Amen. I want to say that again. Other individuals, no matter how good looking, how pretty they are, how dressed pretty they are, or whatever, they can't make you happy deep down. Only rejoicing in God can get you happy and keep you happy in Jesus' name. 
They, 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 they can be a pacifier. I, I spoke, I spoke uh, last night and shared it with the minister uh, that, uh, that some were upset with me. And, 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 I, and, I, and I gave him the illustration, those that are wearing the religious diapers daily, they're still babies in Christ. They're wearing religious diapers. There are many Christians walking around here in religious diapers. They need to get the blood of Calvary over their lives and stop being so self-centered and get on with the program and rejoice in God and depend on God for everything. I'm going to tell you something. I was ready to get out of those diapers when I was a little boy. I was ready. Because they were hot in the summer. I, 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 I wore no shirt. Mommy told me. And I only had diapers. I was, because they were heavy. And it 85 degrees. And all we had back then was a fan. There was no air conditioning. Yeah, right. But I was ready to grow up and put on some boxers. I like to get real when I'm talking with people. I mean, the way I talk at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to talk from the pulpit. God knows my heart. I wanted to grow up. We need to grow up and grow up into rejoicing. We need to grow up and rejoice in God no matter what happens this afternoon? I'm going to rejoice in God. I'm going to give God my all. No matter who hurts my feelings this afternoon through text, through call, and I know I'll get a few of them before I go to bed tonight. It's almost a sure thing. No matter what, I'm going to rejoice in God first before I text back or before I talk back. Let's skip to verse 18. In everything, what? I'm going to give thanks. Let me read that again. In everything, give thanks. Are we giving thanks today? Am I giving thanks for everything? Did we wake up thanking God? Or we woke up thinking we deserve more? You, we don't have more because we don't trust God. We don't give God our whole heart. We give God a portion of our mind. We give God a portion of our heart. That's why we, we complain so much. I want to give thanks in everything. Even if there's an accident on the side of the road, I need to give thanks to God. And need to get out and try to help them. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I need to give thanks to God. There's a reason for that accident. There's a reason for things that go on in your family. There's a reason behind it. But I need to give thanks. The Apostle Paul says give thanks in everything. When we take up these times and offer it, it's just like singing to God. We need to give thanks that we're able to give to God. Because God, we're expecting a harvest from what we give. We're expecting an increase from God. And I'll tell you something, to look around here the last three years and one month, we're sure reaping the benefits of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give thanks. What else does it say? For this is what? The will of God. Hallelujah. Don't you want to do the will of God? Yes, sir. Or you want to do your will? Yes, sir. There's a big difference. I spent a time of my life out of these be 58 years come August that I wanted to do it my will, my way. And I lost everything. Thank God I got back on the path that straightened my life out. I wanted to do it the will of God. 
Don't you want to do the will of yes. God this oh, morning? Yeah. God, Don't you do want to serve Him with all your heart? Well, preacher, I'm doing it. Are you doing it enough? In Christ Jesus, what? Concerning you, no matter what happens this afternoon, no matter what is thrown on your plate, you won't expect it in, in a bill that's coming in the mail this week. I am going to trust God and I'm going to give thanks. That goes for you too. No matter what the unexpected happens this week, we're going to rejoice, we're going to pray, and we're going to give thanks in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It could be worse. It could get worse. So we need to praise Him while we can. While there's breath. Woo! While there's breath on the inside of me. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to pray. I'm going to give thanks to God. Because it could be worse. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know the thought just come to me? I could be in a wheelchair right now. And, and having a little piece up here blowing in it to get it to move. Jesus. You know there's there are people like that? Yes. They blow into a little piece to get it to move. Mm -hmm. wow. What in the world is our problem? Jesus. He's He's been so good to us. He's so let us good. live this long. He's let you live this long. We need to rejoice and pray and give thanks to it. No matter what happens in your family today, give thanks unto God. Give thanks unto God. If a loved one dies today, give thanks unto God. Because you've got to trust God more than you have to trust the flesh of people. Because sooner or later, they're going to leave you. Sooner or later, they're going to leave you. But give thanks for the time you had with them. Wrap your arms around them now. In Jesus' name. Wrap your and tell them all you've been holding back. Because you're holding back something. You need to wrap your arms around them and tell them how much you love them. Oh, they don't want to love me right now. They're upset with me. You need to tell them to get over that upsetness. You need to still do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 19, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at this one. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. If you're a believer, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. Paul is saying, rejoice, pray, give thanks, and don't stop a move of God in your life. Amen. Don't stop a move of God. Quench not the Holy Spirit. That's what it means. If you've been told everything else, you're being told the correct meaning today. It is to rejoice, to pray, and give thanks. And don't stop the flow of God from stirring up on the inside of you on this Sunday. Don't care what nobody says. You need to praise God no matter what somebody says. How you act don't matter. As long as you're pleasing God, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it in Jesus' name. Quench not the Holy Ghost. Yes, Because you rather deal with a flesh. It's going to die and leave you. You'll see them in glory again. Hallelujah. You need to not quench the power of God. That's why you lack. That's why I lack. That's why people lack. Because they quench the Holy Ghost. They, they stop a movement of God. And they're saved. And they stop a movement of God. Because I don't know what he might tell me to do next. And I'm not ready for that. I'm ready for anything. Preach. If he wants me to take all these chairs, gives me the idea. We have church out there one Sunday. I'll be putting them all out there. No, we got. I don't have to use these. I got chairs all that. Thank God for the 14 by 10 bar out there. Thank God for the man with the vision. 
Thank God for the man with the vision. We can do something with these pilots. I'll never forget that as long as I live because we needed chairs like that. All I got to do is pull them out and have church like that. And those that are too hot come in here and sit in air condition. In other words, and I'm not trying to scare you because we need to be, if it's over 80 degrees, we need to be in here. We got air conditioning. But what I'm saying, whatever God tells you to do, you need to do it. Whatever God's speaking to you, don't be doing things because your sisters, your brothers, and your family members do it. You've got to be led by God to do the thing. If you're not led by God to do it, it's not going to work. It's going to collapse. It can't be what others are doing. It's got to be what God called you to do. And if God didn't call you to do it, it will not last. It will end. Quench not the Holy Ghost. Quench not the Holy Spirit on this Sunday. Quench not the Holy Ghost. The reason why we don't smile more is because we're quenching the Holy Spirit. The reason why there's not more joy in our lives is because we quench the Holy Spirit by our attitude towards people. We got some rough attitudes towards people. We need to get over these attitudes. I got people I can have grudges against to the dark. But I don't have a grudge against them. I got some people I love with all my heart. They hurt me bad. They hurt me bad and they're still living. But I don't hold nothing against yes. them no more. Yes. They hurt me bad because I had my whole heart in it. And they dropped it. But I'm going to move in God because people will fail you. You listen to me today. I will fail you, but God will never fail you. Your husband will fail you. Your wife will fail you. Your family members will fail you. But God will not fail you. Quench not the Holy Ghost on this Sunday. Despise not prophesying. Oh my. Verse 20. Despise not prophesying. Do you know what that means? This holy book is from God. For those that don't know, prophesying is what is here. If it doesn't add up with what is in these 60 books, mm -hmm. they are false and they are a liar. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many followers they got. I don't care how nice their vehicle is. I don't care how nice their suit is and how long they've been on television. If it's not in the Word of God, they're telling you a lie. Amen. And it's not the doctrine of a denomination. It is the Word of God. That's why I don't pass out a doctrinal statement. The doctrinal statement is the 66 books of the Bible. Because if you go read all these doctrinal statements, you see a whole lot of flesh that gets in them. Jesus. Prophesying is speaking the truth of God where other individuals are able to understand. Yes. It's different than speaking in tongues. Yes. Speaking truth. Speaking truth. In the, in the table Bible talk this morning, and there was a powerful verse there, Acts 21, I believe, was where the path passes today. That the ladies were prophesying. And then we and then we've got people today saying, women can't preach. You don't know your Bible. Women can preach. Women carry the anointing of God because the word said they prophesy. Prophesying is also preaching what the word says. Why in the world are we so confused? Because we've not read the complete word of God for ourselves. We are know-it-alls. We're know-it-alls because we've depended on folks that have stood in the pulpit and have lied to us for years. And they've got our money, took your money, and they've stole money, and they shouldn't have done it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what prophecy is. <laughs> Prove all things. Verse 21. Hold fast that which is good. 
Yes, Lord. What's that prove all things? I'm going to wrap it up so you can go home. Prove all things. Everything I say or any minister gets up here and says, you better get your Bible. If you don't like to read, you better get somebody to read it to you or go listening to the scripture. Get somebody to share the scripture and you listen to it online. It's free online Bible apps. So no one has no excuse. Prove all things. Why do I say at the end of every service, don't take me home with you. I reread the scripture. Not so. Sometimes I don't reread it, but I give you the passage of scripture. Sometimes I reread it. Take that home with you. Reread it. Because I want you to be able to prove all things. How so many people are messed up is because they didn't even go back and look at the scriptures that were preached at the midweek service on Sunday. They took what that man or woman was saying and they are all mixed up. Mm -hmm. Prove what? That's for you folk. Prove all things. You prove all things on me because I'm sure proving all things on you. Hold fast. In other words, which is what? Good. If it ain't good, you let it go. Drop it like it's a hot potato. And if you can't run, pick up your feet. If you can't pick up your knees, get somebody to pick you up and get away from them. Amen. 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 Stay with the good, which is the word of God. Amen. You don't stay with a preacher. They come and go. They'll mess you up. But you stay with the word of God, folks. Then you'll grow. You won't have so many sad days. You won't have so many lonely days where you feel like nobody don't love you. Jesus loves you. All you got to do is tap into the Holy Ghost that lives with inside of you. Yes, sir. Folks can't do nothing for you. They can't do you like Jesus. They can't do you like Jesus. The final verse, verse 22, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Abstain from all appearances, appearance of what? Evil. Evil. I think that's very self-explanatory. Even if it's a family person you love to death, you need to stay away from them and pray for them. They don't need to drag you in the ditch with them. There are people that love so much they go get in the ditch and stay with people in the ditch. They stop going to church. They fall out of the will of God and the power of God was all on them and they're in the ditch right now wallowing over flesh. Wallowing over something they shouldn't have never got involved into that. And God has grace and mercy. Yes, He'll bring us back. But we need to stay away from the appearance of evil. Wow. I can tell you some stories about my own life. How I got all jacked up and jumped up. But we don't have time to do that today. Preach it, preach it. Preach it. But we need to abstain from all evil. Rejoice. Yes, Lord. Pray. Give thanks. Amen. Even if the light bill comes in, it's $429 for the month. What's it say? Rejoice. Pray. Give thanks. If, even if that gas bill comes in. Woo! For the one month. And it's $750. I need to rejoice. Pray and give thanks. Because one thing about it. At that price. Somebody was staying warm. Up in here. Up in here. They won't cold it off. They could have walked around in their pajamas. All day, every day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Jesus. I love preaching because that's what God called me to do. I love it. He gets all inside of me. The Holy Ghost goes to moving. There ain't no notes up here but the scripture. That's how I preach. Because I depend on God to fill my mouth with the word of God. I'm not going to talk junk to you. 
I'm going to give you the word of God. You take it home and let it get inside of you. God will change your life. God will mold you. God will make you. And at the end of the day, where everybody's upset, like somebody has hurt them, you will rejoice, you will pray, and you'll give thanks. We need to stop finally, and then I conclude. We need to stop being jealous of what the Father is doing in people's lives. We need to stop referring to what the Lord is doing in people's lives. If we're not rejoicing with them and praying with them yes. and giving thanks, we need to hush because all we are has become jealous people. You don't progress in God being jealous of another individual and their talents and what they've got going on in their life. It's because you failed to do what they did and you're jealous. That's not what a child of God does, brothers and sisters. I'm not jealous of no preacher. I could care less about a, another preacher. I don't have time to watch them. Maybe 30 seconds I'll flip to them. And don't even take that long. But I've got to keep myself right. Yes. I don't care what's going on down the road or in the next town. I know what God is doing through me here and what God is doing through us. Yes. And we cannot lose our focus. We're doing things that no other church in this area is doing within a 40 or 50 mile radius through an individual church. Thank you. Jesus. Because God is doing this. Amen. There's no need to be jealous and talk about it continuously. Amen. I cannot please everyone. You cannot please everyone. Sometimes you'll get riffed up with me. But let's get over it. Because when I get riffed up with you, I go to my, go at my wife. We got to rejoice. And we got to pray. And we got to give thanks. I just tell it like it is. Thank God she's got some good ears. There's no, there's no extra wax in her ears. Both of her ears here are good. And it just soars right home through. And she just keeps that smile on her face. Thank God for a lady like that. Hey. Not all ladies are like that. They'll come at you. <laughs> Rejoice. Pray. And give thanks. Yes. Hey. Whatever happens when you walk out of here today. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. Yes. Whatever happens tonight, rejoice, pray, give thanks. No matter what happens tomorrow, what comes in your mailbox tomorrow, rejoice, pray, and give thanks. And you are going to be a winner. You're going to succeed in God. God's going to take you through it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah.